so worthy. Thank you, Lord. Whatever I do, I want to be found giving him praise. Yes. Be found giving him worship. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Wow. The Bible says no man knows the day or the hour. So just be found worshiping him. Yes. Thank you, Lord. In the way you walk, in the way you talk, yes. in everything you do. Thank you. And you'll find if you purpose to praise him, your countenance will change. Yes. You can't praise him and be bitter and angry at the same time. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, you'll find that he's the one that makes you happy. Nothing around. People don't make you happy. It's the Lord. Hallelujah. And it's the joy he gives. Amen? Amen? And because he gives it, no man can take it away. So we just declare that the Lord makes us happy. Yeah. He makes us whole.
318 1811. I gave you my amen. 318 So that's P.O. Box 546, Hamilton, Georgia, uh, 31811. Again, I pray that you will give. I pray that you will be a blessing. And again, you cannot give except you first give your tithe and offering. So while we have other avenues for giving, I want to admonish you to please, ma'am, please, sir. Give your tithe and then your offerings and then all the other avenues of campaign contributions we have, then we can give unto them. Is that all right? Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you now for the time that we share. God, we thank you for the opportunity to be a blessing unto you. For again, you have so richly been a blessing unto us. Thank you for keep on giving unto us, God. And so now that we you've given unto us, we now want to give back unto you because again we know we can't beat you giving and so God as we give unto you God I pray that none here would suffer because of their giving but I'm asking God that in your sovereign hand that you return restore and replenish unto them that which they rendered unto you it is in the name of your son Jesus Christ we pray and every heart that agrees said amen how many of y'all know God answers our prayer let me try it again. How many of y'all know God answers our prayers? And I just believe today that when you pray and pray right, God will hear and he will answer our prayer. Listen, listen, in order to pray, you can't pray with all malice of evil in your heart. If you're going to pray, you got to pray with a clear mind, a clear conscience, because the things that you can't even pray for, God, through Jesus Christ, is able to take those things that are in your heart, in your mind, and he's able to translate those things so that God will do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. How many of y'all know he's still able? I mean, think about it. Think about it. Just this week, he kept you all week long. Just last night, he covered you. Didn't nobody break in on you. Didn't nobody steal anything from you. You got up early this morning, clothed in your right mind. I want to suggest to you that if you learn to keep yourself in God, how many of y'all know God to keep you? And so I don't know where you are today. I don't know what you're thinking today. I don't know your situation and your circumstance. But this is the one thing I do know that when the church prays, good things will happen. Is that right? Whether you are in sanctuary or whether you are at home in worship, when the church prays, good things will happen. So today we're meditating. We're meditating on our sick, our shedding. We're meditating on those who are out of the ark of safety. We're meditating on those that may even now have a confused mind and heart. We are meditating on our young people. We're praying for them, God, that you will keep and cover them. We're praying for the Friendship Church, even the absent part of our worship experience and our parishioners this morning. We're praying that God will touch their hearts, touch their minds, that they are come back to the house of worship, that we together may lift up the name of our Christ. Wherever you are today, you ought to have somebody, something to thank God for. Come on, lift up your voices today. Help us say that all over the building. If you don't mind, why don't you lift up your voices and say, Thank you, Lord.
our maker and our creator. Again, God, we come before your presence, before your throne, just to say thank you. Our Father, we pause here and now to say thank you because, God, you've been good to us. God, you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And God, for that, we pause to say thank you. God, we want to pause just to say thank you for allowing us to lay down last night. God, thank you for allowing us to toss and turn all night long. But God, we thank you that right early this morning, God, you woke us up and again started us on another day's journey. And God, for that, we say thank you. Thank you, God, that you gave us the activities of our lives and you clothed us in our right mind. And God, you gave us the ability to come back to the house of worship to say thank you. Now, God, that we're here, God, we all experience some trials and tribulations now that we're here. We've all experienced some unwelcoming circumstances, but God, we come today to give your name glory. God, we come today, God, absence of our problems. We come absence of our sicknesses. God, we come in absence of our, our long suffering. God, we come just to tell you thank you. Thank you, God, for being our God this morning. Thank you, God, for looking beyond our faults. And thank you, God, for supplying all of our every need. Because, God, we know we're not all that you we ought to be. God, but we thank you with not what we used to be. But, God, we worship you because when you get through with us, God, we shall come forth as pure gold. And so, God, as we come today on this fourth Sunday in the month of May, God, as we come today, God, the first day of the week, we come today on this Pentecost Sunday. God, we come to celebrate the birth of the church. But God, I thank you that the word declares that upon the rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so God, we stand on your solid rock. God, we stand on your word this morning. God, we stand on the foundation, God, that holds us when we can't hold ourselves. And so God, as we get today, every person in this place, every old person, every middle-aged person, every young person, God, in this place, help us now to give your name the praise and the glory, for again, if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't praise you enough, but here we are this morning, just say thank you. God, we're praying for sick members. God, the members in the hospital, we're praying for members, God, that are behind prison bars. We're praying for members, God, that are eating out of trash cans. We're praying for members, God, that don't have a roof over their head. We're praying for members that don't have the feasible transportation to get from place to place. God, we're praying that you're just here and answer. God, we know if you hear and answer our prayer. God, we'll testify, God, not some things, not a few things, but God, we know by faith everything is going to be all right. And so, God, we're praying now for a rainbow word from on high. Speak to our hearts, speak to our minds. God, speak to our spirits this morning. God, that we'll be better people today than we were on yesterday. God, speak to our spirits today, God, that you would help us to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God, we thank you today. God, we had 10,000. We couldn't say thank you enough. But God, we just paused to say thank you. Thank you, God, for doing what needs to be done. Thank you, God, for saving a wretch like us. Thank you, God, for holding us in the hollow of your own hand. God, we just paused to say thank you. Now, God, hide me not beneath the cross, but hide me in the cross. Because, God, I know if you hide me in the cross, these not people will see none of me, but, God, they'll see all of me. Not if you do it, but when you shall have done it. We'll be so very careful to forever give your name praise, honor, and glory. In the matchless, marvelous, magnificent, mighty, and matchless name of Jesus Christ, Yahshua, Messiah, we pray. Yeah. And every heart that agrees say, Amen. 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 Amen.
me out. Anybody glad he brought you out?
attention to the gospel as recorded by St. John chapter number 14. I want to begin at verse 16 reading through verse 18 sharing what verse 17 has to say prayerfully reminding us that Jesus Christ died, he was buried and he got up the third day morning right. went away but he is coming back and when he comes back I want to just share with you have your green card ready to go but when he comes back if you're not ready He's going to lead you right where you stand. Amen. Your copy of God's Word, whether hardback or electronic, from the 14th chapter of the Gospel that's recorded by St. John, when you have it, would you register by saying the Amen? Amen. It says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another com comforter, mm -hmm. that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Verse 18 says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. With the Lord's help and with your amens, I want to use for a sermon subject again growing in the grace of God. Come on, say it back with me. Growing in the grace of God. 
my brothers and sisters, we come this Sunday morning, this fourth Sunday morning in the month of May in the year of our Lord, 2021, to again celebrate not only a dead Jesus, but a risen Christ. But yes, I want to suggest to you that it's not just the fact of it being Easter Sunday morning wherein we come because the grave is empty or the tomb is vacant. But here we are now 50 days after the resurrection of Christ, knowing that it is Pentecost Sunday, Pente meaning 50, that we come to tell the Lord thank you. The reason I tell God thank you is because the word 50 now celebrates itself in the fact that now I am uh, uh, substantiated in the fact that Jesus Christ is alive and well. And every now and then we must tell God thank you because of the reality of him being alive and well is the fact that we too now can feel him deep down on the altars of our hearts. For as we investigate this text and as we breathe through this this introduction you must understand the reason I thank God for 50 days after the resurrection of Christ is now he has given me a promise the promise I believe he's given me according to the word is that now he's getting ready to receive me and give me a church or give me the Holy Spirit that will govern and guide me in the absence of Jesus Christ and that's why my brother and sister that we come today just chapter 14 is not so much a text that resonates on the fact that Jesus Christ is building a house with many mansions but now chapter 14 beginning in verse 16 down through verse 18 substantiates the fact that yes Jesus Christ is not going to leave me by myself and I believe today there's some people in the building that know that Christ Jesus is enable, uh, he's able to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves Self. Is there anybody glad that he did not leave you by yourself? I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I'm grateful. I'm glad this morning because of the very essence of the text. God left me Jesus Christ. But aren't you glad today Jesus Christ left me the Holy Spirit? That's why I want to suggest to you today, I can't sit there like nothing is going on in my life. I can't sit there like the Holy Spirit has not moved in my life. But again, I just told you, when I think of who God is, come on y'all help me and what God has done in my life, I can't help but to what tell the Lord thank you. That's why when I look at the text how I know he's leaving me somebody else. He leaves me on the cuff of reminding me to keep his commandment because when you study the text here it is in verse 15 Jesus said to the disciples he said listen if you love me look what he said do what keep my commandment. He shares with them in verse 15 yes yeah, the door is going to be open in the fact that you're not going to just keep my commandments while I'm present. But he says according to verse 15, I'm going to need you to keep my commandments in our absence. But guess what my brother and sister, it's good to know that when he's absent, he really ain't absent. Are y'all in here with me? It's good to know that even when you can't really see him, he's still there. Is there anybody glad this morning to testify that you thank God that he had, even though I can't touch him, I can't see him, how many of y'all know you can still feel that? I wish I had some old folk in here that would say something touch me. Anybody glad you can testify something touch me deep down on the altar of my heart. Verse 15 said, listen, you're no longer going to see me present, but I'm going to still be here in my absence. Right. How do you know, Pastor? They were calling me study the text again. Verse 16 now through verse 18. Verse 18 says, watch this. I will not leave you what? Comfortless. Are y'all seeing that in the text? It says, I will come to you. Here's the question today. Wait a minute. You're getting ready to remove yourself from all presence, all activity, but yet you say you're going to send me somebody. Yeah. You say yet you're going to be by my side. Yeah. I thank God this morning uh -huh. because if you don't go, the Holy Spirit can come. And I don't know about you, every now and then I tell God, thank you for his Holy Spirit. Why? Because every now and then when I get ready to make some decisions that may be disturbing, how many of y'all know it is the Holy Spirit that will retrain my thought? And guess what? I do things after the order of an awesome God. He says today we got to learn to make sure that what we do, we do it after the order of God. But why? After 
after the Lord and keeping his commandments in his action said that we're going to have the Holy Spirit to lead God and direct us. I don't know about you, but I thank God that every now and then I can have the Holy Spirit to prop me when I'm leaning. I can have the Holy Spirit to pick me up when I'm down. Anybody ever been all by yourself and sad? Guess what? It is the Holy Spirit that will regenerate your life and lift and look back over your life and see what God has brought you from and you can't help but to say yeah. Is there anybody in the building got a yes in your heart? Is there anybody in the building got a yes in your lips? Is there anybody in here can tell the Lord thank you. Do I have a witness in here? So tell me, Pastor, how in does Pentecost Sunday have to do with the study of growing in grace? I'm glad you asked, Deacon Smith, because here's what I get out of the text today, is that if I'm going to resonate and receive what God has on this 50th day after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then here's what I have to understand, Linda, is that I got to learn to still grow in God's grace. Are y'all in here with me? That, that's why it says in verse 15, if you love me, do what? Keep my commandment. The word keep in the Greek now simply means the God. He comes back in verse 18 and said, I will not leave you by yourself. Are y'all in here with me? I won't leave you comfortless. I will what? Come. What do y'all see there? To you. Well, how is it then? Dictates the meaning that I got to still grow in grace. The reason why I grow in grace by way of this text today is first of all, I have to realize my acceptance of his authority. Are y'all in here with me? What, what do you mean, Pastor, that your acceptance of his authority? Here it is in the text. Watch verse 16. Verse 16 says, and I will what? Pray uh -huh. the Father. And watch this. And he will what? Give you another what? Comforter. Do y'all see that in the text? Well, the question is, what kind of comforter? Is he going to give me a comforter of a different kind? Absolutely not. He's going to give me a comforter of the same kind. Another in his text now simply says, not just physical, but now spiritual. Are y'all in here with me? That's why verse 16 says uh, that I'm going to come with you. I'm not going to leave you by yourself. It's his authority. What do you mean this authority, Pastor? They will call the text says, watch this. When I accept God's authority, uh -huh. then what I really do is accept his plan. Yeah. What is his plan? That his plan is to build the church, and that's why when you cross-reference the text, watch this. I think God, Acts 1 and 8 says, and after this ye shall receive power. Uh -huh. And after this, guess what? The Holy Ghost, are y'all glad in here, shall come upon you. That's why I tell you, don't be afraid of the Holy Ghost. There are too many of y'all in here that are afraid of the moving of the Holy Spirit. We ask for stuff like that. We ask for the Spirit to move. We ask for God to have his own way. Are y'all in here with me? And when I accept his authority, how many of y'all know I can't help but to accept the plan of God? Text says in verse 16, it said we have had torn it out. Look what he says, I will what pray to the Father. And he shall what give you what? Another comforter. What's the plan, Pastor? It's in the text. Verse 16 says that he may what abide with you forever. Do I have any help here? See, the plan of God says to every believer in God is that listen, you won't be by yourself. That's why I tell you all the time, quick figuring things out because God has already worked them out. All you got to do is simply follow the plan of God. Now, is there anybody here glad you can follow God's plan? Yeah. Is there anybody glad you can do what needs to be done because you know the plan of God? Are y'all in here with me? If I'm going to grow in the grace of God, if I'm going to follow the plan of God, then I got to accept the authority of God. Is there anybody that's a good place to help me preach in here? that know that if you accept the plan of God, the authority of God, how many of y'all know everything will be alright? Sickness may be in your body, but it's his plan, it'll be alright. You may be broke, but it's his plan, you may be alright. Death may invade your home, but how many of y'all know in his plan, accepting his authority, growing in his grace, how many of y'all know everything will be all right. How do you know? Because look what he does. The plan is for Jesus to do what? Pray. Can I suggest to you today it's a good thing to pray? Are y'all in here with me? When I think about verse 16, thank God for the plan of God because the plan of God identifies to you and I that if we pray and pray right, God, he 
hear and both answer our prayers. Can I just pop my kicks down there and ask the question, how many of y'all ever had to pray at night? How many of y'all ever had to pray early in the morning, in the evening time, man? Because you've accepted the authority of God. How many of y'all know God here and answers your prayer? The old church would declare, he may not come when I want him to. But if there's five of y'all, I make six that will say, he's always. Look what Jesus does in verse 16. He prays to the Father. Praise to the Father. Says that if he prays to the Father, he'll send me another. Another, not of a different kind. But here it is. Deacon Murphy, another of the same kind. The text says that he may do what? Abide with me. What forever. See, my love, when you've been touched by the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit has accepted you for who you are, then guess what? Can I suggest to you? He'll ride with you even when you won't ride with him. And I don't know about you, but I've done some things in my life today that I ain't super proud of. But Sister Fan, I thank God that when I messed up, the Holy Spirit was still with me. Anybody glad today that when you hung up on yourself, how many of y'all know the Holy Spirit makes you click back over and say, Dad, I still got you because I know the plan God has for your life. You got to get out of here and watch this. If I'm going grace, because of the Sunday, we celebrate Pinty. Not only must I understand the acceptance of the Lord based upon the plan and the prayers of Christ, but here it is, number two. I want to suggest to you accepting the authority of God leads you into number two, the blessing you have in obedience. Right. How many of y'all know it's a blessing to be obedient? Yeah. I want to suggest to you the Bible teaches us obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah. Are y'all in here with me? Here it is today. I thank God. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. But he's really saying in that text today, support is not if you love me. In the sense of a conditional statement, but he says, since you love me, in the original Greek text, he says, since you love me, keep my Amen. commandments. Amen. And since he says, since you love me, keep my commandments, what he really says to me is that if I'm growing grace, then what I see is that there will be a blessing in my obedience. Can I suggest to you that even when you don't feel like it, it's good to be obedient. And I suggest to you, even when you don't know how it's going to come out, it's still good to be obedient. Can I suggest to you today that even when everybody has walked away from you and left you by yourself, if God has told you what to do, how many of y'all know it's still good to be obedient, not to me, not to a building, but how many of y'all know it's good to be obedient to the word of God? How do you know that stays in the text? How do you know verse 17 says, even the spirit of truth. Uh -huh. Y'all see that? Who watch this? The world can't not receive. Because it's seeing not neither knoweth him. But ye know him for he what dwells in you. Yeah. Do y'all see that in the text? And shall be in you. What do you mean that it's a blessing in obedience? Why? Because first thing the text is tailored to teach me is that in verse 17, when I understand my blessing is in my obedience, I'm standing on a sure foundation. Y'all ain't said nothing to me. The reason I can stand is because not because my shoes are so tight. Right. Not because my feet are so was also big size 13, but here it is. I can stand because I got a sure and a solid foundation. Right. Are y'all in here with me? What do you mean? Here it is, the solidness of my foundation is not in what I know. But here it is, Jake, the solidness in my foundation is about who I know. Can I ask the question today? Is there anybody here know you know who Jesus is? Can say anybody here know you know who the Holy Spirit is? The Holy Spirit is not in the end, it's a person. It's the third party in the Holy Trinity. I thank God that what he gives me is blessings for my obedience. You need to get some blessings for your obedience. He stands you on a sure foundation. Foundation that grips and holds the solid rock. Are y'all in here with me? What the foundation does now is separates you from them. Are y'all in here with me? That's why I shouted when I got to verse 16. Because verse 16, what it does, it not only puts me in the same category as them, but yet it separates me from them. Y'all miss y'all shout here right there. Let me, let me try to get here. It, it, it puts me in the same category as them. But yet in the same verse, it separates me from them. How do you know that? The text says in verse 17, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. That's the same category. But yet we're still separated. How do you know the devil? Because I'm still in the world. But can I tell you?
what I shouted about this morning? I'm not of the world. Brother Hudson, here it is every Sunday morning when I get an opportunity to stand before I'm the second best to suggest to somebody who will listen to my voice. I may be in the world, but how many of y'all glad the world don't have to be in me? He separates me in the text because verse 17 says that the world cannot receive. How many of y'all glad today? That your solid foundation is sure. Yeah. Do I have a witness in here? But watch this recording. Do you have the assurance of a solid foundation? But then you have the sacredness of the foundation that's solid. All I did was rearrange words right there. Shay, here it is. I got the sacredness of a foundation that's solid. Can I suggest to you where you stand? It's a solid foundation. But the way you stand, you better know it's a sacred foundation. How do you know because the text says, watch this, but ye know. Do y'all see that in the text? Verse 17 says, but ye know. Let me say it again. It says, but ye know him. And the text says, for he what? Dwelleth where? With you. The text says, and he shall what? See y'all, Mr. the right there. The reason why my foundation is solid. It's not because I'm standing on it. Are y'all in here with me? The reason why my foundation is solid and I know I'm born in grace is because what's on the inside of me that makes where I stand a sacred foundation. That's why I tell you, you better not play with the Spirit of Christ. You better not play with the Holy Spirit. You better not play with the third person of the party of the Holy Trinity, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Why? Because not only is your foundation sure, but the text says it's a sacred foundation. Do I have a witness here? The obedience that comes with my blessing. That says, that watch this, not only do I know him, but verse 17 says what? He knows me. Can I just draw my kids back right there and ask the question? Is there anybody glad he knows you? Y'all ain't saying nothing, man. And the thing I like about the fact that he knows me, he don't know me as I am. He knows me as I was. I wish I could walk down your street this morning. The reason why I thank God for him knowing me not just as I am, because if he only know me who I am, then he'll never understand where he brought me from. But is there anybody here glad that you can testify? I thank God he knows me not just where I am, but he knows me from where I've come. He knows me from where I walk. I can testify if it had not been for Jesus bringing me from where I was to where I am. I had nothing to praise him for. But is there telling y'all in here, I make a living that is shot. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here, thank God, you got something to praise God for? Is there anybody glad that he knows me. The reason I'm grateful for growing in the grace of God is because I'm able now to accept the authority of God. The reason why I'm grateful for growing in the grace of God is simply because I know there's a blessing in my obedience unto God. But can I tell you today the reason why I keep going in grace? If my yesterday is never going to be like my today, and my today hopefully will not be like my tomorrow, it's because I got somebody. His name is Jesus. How do you know today? Because the text says not only does he send me the Spirit of Christ to dwell in me and be in me, the text says in verse 18. this. Do I have any help in here? For the text says, I will what? Come to you. It's verse 18 today that now connects me to the point that I can suggest that yes, the wind I grow in grace. Hope is not lost. Can I suggest to you my hope is not just in what I was able to watch him do. But my hope is in who he really is. Do I have any help here? He's talking to the disciples. Chain, listen, no hope. Your hope, all hope, is not lost. Why? Because remember the same boys saw him turn water into wine. That gave them hope. They saw him heal blinded eyes. That gave them hope. They saw him raise 
takes dead men from a four day long nap which indeed gave them hope. But what he suggests to the believer is now that in the absence of my presence, all your hope is not lost. What he really saying to every born again Christian and believer. He simply says, thank God for Pentecost Sunday. The reason why he says, thank God for Pentecost Sunday is because it helps you now to grow in the grace of God. And the reason my brothers and sisters, I shouted because of the 50th day after the resurrection hymns because Pentecost says that now I can continue to grow in the grace of God. Have I gotten to help you? The reason why I grow in the grace of the Almighty God is not just because of what I see him do, but the reason why I grow in the grace of God is because I know who he really is. Yes. Have I got any help in here? For I stand by on my way to glory to suggest to somebody that yes, if you're going to understand a Pentecost Sunday, 50 days after the resurrection of Christ, then there's something you must do. You got to learn to keep God's commandments. Is there anybody in here that knows there's something about? Of keeping God's commandments. Is there anybody in this building that can justify that when I learn to keep God's commandments, how many y'all know God's commandments here to keep me? I'm going to my seat now, but I can't leave y'all this morning without telling something. Thank God for. Of Jesus Christ, have we got me help here? For Jesus Christ, having the last meeting with his disciples before the birth of the New Testament church says, Don't worry about me leaving me all. Have we got me help in here? But I'm going to leave you, but I'm going to leave you comfortless. Have I got me help in here? And that's why every man did. Tear went down your eyes. Think of white tears from your eyes. Have I got to help you? Every I'm now in there when I can't see my way or through or out. Something I grab the hold of my hand and leads and guides me. Have I got to help you to hear? I'm now in thee when the world is falling and chaos and confusion it will assist me I have somebody on the altar of my heart that will help me to know peace it will be still anybody in here are you glad he didn't leave you comfortless have I got any help here is anybody glad he did not leave you by yourself anybody glad you got somebody that you can talk to in the midnight of the hour. You got somebody you can go to God in prayer in the noon day of the hour. Every now when me when I'm all by myself, I got to tell God thank you. Is there anybody in here got anything to thank you for? Is there anybody in here got anything to tell God thank you? Have I got any help in here? Thank God for who he is. Thank God for the plan of God. Have I got any help in here? Thank God for the plans of God. Now in Jesus Christ, thank God for the short foundation that I now stand on that makes my foundation sure and sacred. Have I got any help here? And I got to leave y'all today when I tell somebody all oh, hope. It's not lost. The reason why my hope is not lost is first of all, he knows my destiny. Have I got any help in here? Where I am, the Lord brought me. When I know the same God taught me. Where I'm going, he's still going to take me. Have I got any help in here? Don't worry, my hope is not lost. Have I got any help in here? He knows. Anybody that he knows, hey, he knows, he knows my destiny, but I got to go now to tell somebody the reason why my hope is not lost.
cause. It might just because you know my destiny. And I tell somebody, I got a friend in Jesus. Now I got to help you. Well, tell me, Pastor Day, why do you have a friend in Jesus? Got anything to do? about going in the grace and I tell you why because no friend in your weakest moment will leave you by yourself no friend when you're down and out will just leave you alone I've got to help him here thank God for the friends I have I thank God for my fraternity friends I thank God for my church friends I thank God for friends on my job I thank God for friends in my family have I got to help in here but every I'm now in here they can't do for me what I need to be done but I stop by to tell somebody when I know all hope is not lost I got a friend his name is Jesus all my sins and grace of man Yeah, I got out my seat. I came out of the office. I stood behind the football. You remind somebody the reason why I can celebrate a Pentecost Sunday. If I got to remind you that 53 days before, can I tell you what happened? 53 a day before, you take 50 and subtract 50 that'll give you Easter Sunday morning. Take Easter Sunday morning and subtract three days before and they get your crucifixion fried he died y'all ain't shit hey he died from the to the ninth hour they hung him high the church him wide he hung his head and then he died but they come and in the end of my story they took him off the cross and laid him in a rich man's grave he stayed there he sat there all day Saturday. And I tell somebody, I shout every Sunday morning. I shout every time I get it good in it. To tell somebody, he might dead, but alive and well. He died on Friday, but hey, 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 Have I got any help here? Sunday morning, anybody glad, you know he got up, anybody glad, you know he lives, say yeah, can y'all do me a favor, say yeah, can y'all know he got up, say yeah, I wish everybody in here feel like I feel, but I'm somebody to tell you, I feel good on the altar of my heart, why do you feel good? I serve a rhythm Savior. He's not dead, but alive in the way. Won't he make a way out of no way? Can you make one last favor? Can you follow that hand now? Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. Oh yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hope is not lost. I got a friend in Jesus. Hope is not lost. Because not only am I his friend, but how many of y'all know he's my friend? Do I have a witness in here? How many of y'all know he'll stay closer to me as a friend? Sometimes even beyond my own family, beyond my own church, beyond my own work. But how many of y'all know I thank God for Jesus? Because when I can't see him, how many of y'all know he's still right there? Anybody know he's right there? Anybody think God he's right there? Do me 